morning everyone welcome back to my channel hope you're all doing really well happy saturday morning i hope you're currently warmer than i am because it's bloody freezing are you going to be in charge of the pancakes or do you want me to the take the reins of this one the we are currently just prepping a very exciting saturday morning breakfast normally normally we're all about the humble bacon sandwich on a saturday morning but this week in a pr package i think this was from Flow, the period product company, they sent like a Galentine's box of all little small businesses, which was such a cool package. I absolutely loved it. And one of the things in the Galentine's package was this. It's by a company called Griddle. I'll try and find them and link them down below. Um, but it's like ready-made pancake mix. And these are for whole grain chocolate chip pancake mix. So we thought we'd go for something a little bit fancy today and give these a go. I'm excited. Long time no see. Long time no see. Hello everyone. It's got some proper Disney Prince hair going on at the moment. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. This is my Piesta Resistance Pride and Joy Tracy Beaker Bowl, which I got for my 18th birthday. <laughs> I get questions about this every time I feature it anywhere on the internet. Uh, I think it's probably classed as like vintage homeware now. I'm normally a crepe pancake kind of gal, but this looks like quite thick mixture because it's wholemeal. I literally don't really know what I'm doing. Are well, we going to merge? That looks all right to me. Oh, I guess that one looks like a goodie with all them chocolate chips. Yeah, they look perfect. Pancake mixture like this, you won't know what this reference is at all, but some of you might do. It reminds me of the bit in Matilda where she's still really little and she makes pancakes for herself at the beginning. What's, um, that's what she's like. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what song it was that mm -hmm. plays in the background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Oh my god, look at that. That looks like something you'd get at Disney World. Just balancing you on a pasta machine so that I can chat to you. That was such a nice breakfast. We never ever have pancakes, but as soon as that mix came through the door the other day in that package, I was like, oh, I literally can't wait to have these. I don't know if anyone else feels like at the moment that days literally just revolve around planning what you're gonna have for your three meals a day. I feel like the most repetitive conversation we're having at the moment is what to have for lunch. <laughs> I am now gonna sort the kitchen out because to be honest, it's a little bit gross. I'm gonna clean all these glasses. We had a few drinks last night for one of Adam's friend's birthday. He did like an online virtual horse racing night. It was quite fun actually. It wasn't like real races or whatever. It was really fun. Um, and it's not like real money that you bet. It was just, yeah, it was something a bit different. It was good. Here's a very honest before shot, which I probably shouldn't include to be honest because <laughs> it shows how bad our kitchen currently is. Did you drink espresso martinis last night? Yes. Yeah, I can tell by the ingredients that <laughs> left out on the side. Is the most efficient way of washing a cocktail maker just making a washing up liquid cocktail? I think it probably is. What can I get for you, mate? Also, I'm not sure how particularly interesting this is, but for anyone who's got a passion for affordable glassware, I'd like to share my latest bargain purchase with you, which is our new drinking glasses. These were from Wilco, and I reckon they were maybe £2.50 each, and I'm absolutely chuffed with them. They're so nice. They've got this, like, fluted style glass to them. I don't know how well you'll be able to see. Oh, yeah. You can kind of see that. It's got like an iridescent tone to it, but I really wish we bought more of them. I only bought two, but I bet they've all gone now because they were such a bargain. There's only so clean a kitchen can look when you've got a shoe rack and a toolbox just hanging out at the back of it. But we've made the best of it, at least it's clean now. I've cleaned all the surfaces, bleached in the sink, done all the washing up, so that's all good. Adam's making a cup of tea, we've got a shiny clean hob, and I am looking about as shiny as the hob, actually. <laughs> wow, that's quite impressive. I've definitely earned a nice hot shower. I've had a shower. I'm just sorting my hair out a bit. Not that we're going anywhere or do it. This is nice. This is a real, we're all choir boy vibes. Just like doing one thing, whether it's putting some mascara on or bothering to do my hair or, you know, doing my eyebrows, putting my brows on. It just makes me feel a bit like <laughs> I've got, I've given some structure to the day at the weekend. Otherwise it all just kind of blurs into one, doesn't it really? I feel like I'm actually starting to master this thing, please excuse all the hair wrapped around it. You can see where I've like got it stuck and been like, oh my God, I'm going to be bald. I wouldn't say it curls your hair. It just kind of gives you that nice, like a little bit of movement to it, 
which is all I need really, that's what I'm all about. Even though I'm wearing like slightly scabby leggings today and a massive jumper because it's about minus four outside today I think. Um, having my hair done just makes me feel a bit less of a big old grey spud. Is this one gonna work? Are we gonna have a little swoosh here? Come on, give us the swoosh. Give us the swoosh. There it is. There we go, look at that. Princess Belle on a Saturday afternoon. While I was in the shower, I had like a proper, you know, like a pampas shower. I think, is it Louise Padlet that calls it an MOT shower, which is so accurate. Like you have a quick shower, don't you, where you're just like, mm, let's stop me smelling. And then you have like the proper shower where you do like head to toe makeover style. So I've just washed my hair with this which I've never used before and I was just intrigued to be honest because the smell of it, pretty kick-ass. It's a massive tub of hair mask basically. It's a Garnier Ultimate Blends Plumping Hair Food, Watermelon and Pomegranate. It smells so overpoweringly like a Melody Pop, which I've definitely talked about on here before. Anything that's watermelon scented instantly takes me back to a good old Melody Pop. So it's that real kind of like artificial watermelon smell, um, which I have nothing against to be honest. I quite like smelling like a fake watermelon. I don't need a whole lot of assistance when it comes to plumping myself. <laughs> it's one of my many talents, particularly in lockdown, let me tell you. Um, but hey, it seems to have seems to have done the job on my hair. I also give my face a proper cleanse and I'm really enjoying this cleanser at the moment. This is maybe the third one of these that I've had. And normally my go my absolute go-to is a Ren one, which is like a it's like a milk jelly oil cleanser. But I've just run out of that again. So I turned to this one instead to mix things up a bit. And this is the Pixie and Caroline Hirons double cleanse. If you've never seen it before, it comes in two sections, and then you get your balm cleanser on this side and then a cream cleanser on this side. So you can take your makeup off with the balm one and melt it all and get it all off your skin. And then you can actually go in and cleanse your skin properly. And I just think that's great. It's so handy rather than having to have two different products lined up or whatever. You can just reach for this one. Then this one, this is a solid fave and has been for maybe, maybe over a year now, I think. I talked about it a lot in 2020. It was absolutely one of my best beauty discoveries of last year. And I don't think I will ever use anything else now, to be honest. They are a firm favorite of mine. Um, this is my Estrid razor. They very kindly sponsored this video. So thanks Estrid. It's not exactly brand new information, but I love this razor because I've talked about them a lot, but I honestly cannot tell you how much this razor ups your shower game. If you are still using crappy plastic razors that take like 10,000 hours to shave one singular leg, please do yourself a favour and get on board with an Estrid razor. <laughs> they have a whole selection of super duper cute colours. Um, I love this yellow one. I think this is probably my favourite of the bunch. Um, it's got a stainless steel holder, so it's nice and weighty. It feels quite luxury when you're using it. And they are five blade cartridges, which is awesome because they are literally as good as men's razors. I know quite a lot of my mates have always used men's razors because they give you a better shave than the usual women's razors. But Estrid are up on par with the best of the men's razors. And as well as being a great product, I will never use anything else now. Um, I love the whole ethos behind Estrid. They're all about empowering women. They do a lot of work with women's charities. They're all about making it very clear that it is totally your choice whether you decide to shave or not. But if you do, you might as well do it with a bloody good and very cute little razor. Other handy things that you might want to know about Estrid is that the razors work as a subscription service. So rather than going months and months and months, which I have definitely done without changing your razor and using a blunt old razor that cuts your ankles to ribbons. You can choose how often they arrive on your doorstep and it means that you always have lovely fresh razor heads to change and it's lovely and affordable as well. So you can try the starter kit, which so you can get the cute little razor, you can choose your color, um, you can give it a go and see what you think. And I think that costs about eight pounds. So yeah, that is a little quick reminder that if you have not yet tried Estrid and you think you would like to, I'm gonna leave the link in the description box down below. And last but not least, the other thing that I wanted to show you, which I'm really, really loving using at the moment, uh, it's a bit gross. So this is from Glossier. It kind of looks like, I don't know, ham? <laughs> but it is indeed not a chunk of ham in a flannel. It kind of looks like a bar of soap, but it's actually an exfoliating bar. It's very kind of grainy and coarse, but it gives quite a gentle exfoliation. And I just really like using it because of the shape of it. It kind of glides really nicely over your skin. And I've definitely noticed a big difference with like my bumpy arms and my bumpy legs and stuff since I started using that. Look, you've got to improve your life where you can right now. <laughs> you've got to give yourself maximum joy. And if you can improve your quality of life with a watermelon hair mask, a nice posh cleanser, a colorful, cute little razor and a nice exfoliation bar, you do that for yourself, my friend. I'm gonna go and have a little coffee now. 
and I'm gonna watch Drag Race before I see loads of spoilers on Twitter. But the main thing I actually wanted to chat about in this video and talk about and show you is that we're actually getting the ball rolling with getting our bathroom done. Um, we've booked a fitter now, we've got a fitter sorted, um, we've accepted a quote. Don't talk to me about that part because that's quite frankly insane. <laughs> so I thought I would um, like go through it and tell you what we're thinking about doing. I've got some tile samples that I can show you because things are just rock and roll around here. So after I've had a coffee and we've watched Drag Race, we'll talk bathroom. <laughs> in buckle up who's ready to talk bathrooms Aye. you lucky devils if there was something you wanted to do today I would almost guarantee it was a person on the internet talking about their plans for their quite small bathroom <laughs> so to set the scene a little bit you know I like to talk too much you know I like to ramble on about irrelevant things so to set the scene a little bit before I dive in with the plans um, when I say trying to design this bathroom has been a roller coaster, <laughs> I mean that would literally be the worst roller coaster ever. It certainly wouldn't make the Alton Towers roster. There has been so many ideas that I've had for this bathroom that I have just had brutally vetoed by workmen <laughs> who've come to like check out the job and see what's involved. But basically having spoken to, I think I had five around in the end to give me their verdict and their opinion and stuff. Um, but the, the big dream that I had for this bathroom, which actually isn't that big a dream, I thought it was quite humble. I thought it was quite a humble dream. If you watched the house vlogs before, you've probably seen this bathroom at some point, and it's certainly not the tidiest right now, so please excuse that. But anyway, um, it's also on the ground floor. That's good context for what I'm about to tell you. It's on the ground floor, as is quite common in these little cottage style houses. So our floor is hard concrete check out my slippers. So obviously we're not rich enough to move this bathroom upstairs and I hate the fact that when you're in the kitchen the first thing you can see is the toilet so I was like okay brilliant all I want to do is swap this toilet and this sink so the toilet will be nice and hidden and then we can make a lovely feature of the sink. As it turns out which I learned with uh, several workmen basically laughing me out of my own home I won't get into it but I've, hey I've learned a lot about how toilets work it turns out that the pipes have got to be at the right angle so that when you flush you know things move along. So moving a toilet a large distance is almost always a no-go. Don't even think about it, it's too big a job. That was really really disappointing, really disappointing because um, I, I didn't realise that was such a big thing and I thought it would make such a huge fundamental difference. Alas, I've moved on, I've let it go, that one sailed off into the distance. The actual plumber that we've gone with and chosen in the end to do the work was super duper nice, he's such a nice guy and he did say like if you've really really got your heart set on it and you're willing to pay the extra money and you know do the big job it's possible but it will really limit what else you can do in terms of the bath and the shower and stuff and it will be very expensive because it makes it such a big job and it will be incredibly disruptive because we would have to dig up the whole floor which is a hard concrete floor. It's not worth it. And I talked a little bit about it in my video about mistakes we've made with buying a house and stuff. Like the, the ideas you have and the dream things you want to put onto your home, they often just don't translate onto the space that you've actually got and you really really have to design for the space you have rather than the space that you want. And it's been like a big learning curve for me. Um, and hey, sometimes you just come up with ideas that you've got to shelve till next time. I'm going to put you back on the shelf. I put my glasses on by the way because this eyeball is giving me grief and if you're a contact lens wearer you'll just know exactly what I mean just giving you grief for no reason so yeah we went from attempting a small walk-in shower next to a bath not enough space then we went to oh maybe we'll just do a walk-in shower it's not really the right kind of house for like a hotel style lovely swanky walk-in shower it's just not right and also I quite like a bath then we went to swapping the sink and the toilet around also, uh -uh, you're out of family fortunes, it's not gonna fly. But as I said, the plumber that we found is a really, really nice guy and he was full of 
lovely great ideas that I didn't know anything about that will help us maximize this space as much as we can so things like having like a floating style toilet so that it gives illusion of a bit more floor space and he was talking about you know putting like a little like indent shelf in the wall here so that we can have like little LED lighting and stuff so as you might have gathered the layout is going to stay the same because there is no other layout that we can have <laughs> like even if we wanted to which we did it's just not possible and I have come to terms with this. The one exciting thing that we might be able to do, which is still kind of hanging in the air at the moment, is rather than this kind of like box style bath that we have, which is pretty standard for like a British home with like the shower over the top and you kind of stand in the bath. One thing we might be able to swap that out for is like a freestanding bath. And then we'll hopefully have the shower up here, like overhead. So this will be a nice freestanding bath, hopefully. And then the shower will be here. And then obviously we'll have like taps here as well. There are many factors that might stop that, AKA we might not be able to fit a freestanding bath through this doorway. We might not be able to move the taps over there because it's such an old fashioned house. You don't really know what you're gonna get until you rip it all out. And then the sink area over here, we've bought a vintage vanity unit. It's quite like mid-century style. It's the kind of thing that's pretty popular at the moment, but it suits our taste really nicely. Like a vintage wooden vanity unit, which we'll have to like, you know, treat and look after really well. And then like a work, like a top basin or like sit on the top of it almost. And then a little basin tap, and it'll be cute. I'm gonna show you my tile samples now. This is actually the exciting bit, I suppose. I do wanna keep it fairly neutral, and then maybe we can add some color in with like nice towels or, you know, products and hand soaps and stuff. The color can come elsewhere. And then I'm gonna keep the bathroom itself pretty neutral. So a few samples that I've been through, we've got like a stack of tiles in this bathroom. Um, I really, really like this one. This is like a glazed, long, skinny metro tile. This is the one that I really fell in love with and I was like, oh, that's pretty much what I wanna go for. This like herringbone with white grout through it so they look a little bit darker. But then I realized these are hella expensive. Can I just say, tiles? so expensive so this one became like the goal and then i started a hunt to try and find a cheaper alternative <laughs> so i've been through loads of other options so i ordered this one but that's too dark that's gonna be like that's not my kind of that's not my cup of tea then i found this one which i thought was quite nice but then that's so so much skinnier and smaller that it's gonna make it a bigger job and it's gonna need more tiles so not particularly helpful this one i actually do really like but in certain lights, you kind of have to see how the tiles look in certain lights and how the light like bounces off them and stuff. Because this is matte and these ones are glazed, in certain lights this comes off really dark and because it's a small space, not the way to go. I do like it though, it's almost like a, like a plaster kind of colour. So, my absolute triumph here is that I then found, which is actually even more of what I wanted. So here's the expensive one which is more grey. And then this one, which I found, which is almost identical to it, is actually slightly warmer almost, a little bit darker, but a bit creamier than this one. So I'm absolutely buzzing because this is a third of the price of this one. So I call that a success, my friends. So I think this is what we're gonna go for on the walls, like a nice herringbone. How do you do herringbone? It's like that, isn't it? Um, with nice white grout through it to, to brighten it up a bit. And then for floor, I am still yet to fully decide, but I think we'll probably go for something a bit like this. Um, so it'll be a combo of these two things. I'm hoping that's gonna be nice. I mean, have I ever designed a bathroom before? No. Do I know what I'm doing? No. Do I know how this is gonna turn out? Absolutely not. I have got a couple of other floor options. I've got another wood there, but I think that's a bit too pale. Um, I went through a couple of like stone effect ones but these, um, I think, would just be really tricky to keep clean. They've got like a very kind of matte texture to them and they look lovely, but I just don't think they're quite right for us. And then I've also got this whopper. Oh my God, this is so heavy. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. I'm gonna have to use them as like placemats or photo props or something. Um, I did also think about something like that as well, but I think that's a bit like fancy and swanky for such a small little like normal person bathroom. I think this is just gonna look <laughs> A bit mad. I am gonna do on the home Instagram page that we've got, which is at staying at Lucy's, I'm gonna do like a little mood board post of what we're thinking. And I'm hoping <laughs> when you see all the mood board pictures together and the kind of thing that I've I've got in my head, 
it'll make a bit more sense because me going I like this one and then I think this one also is gonna be really good me saying that probably doesn't make it sound great I think I said earlier I've got an appointment with like a design person who works at the wholesalers that the builders use and she is gonna kind of talk it through with me. When Adam gets back from the shops, we've got to um, measure this up really accurately. She wants like ceiling height and like window size and floor size and where we wanna put everything. So that is next on the list today. And we've gotta to make sure we do a good job. <laughs> if you've had any similar struggles with designing a bathroom and then being told that you can't do any of what you wanna do, <laughs> that would be reassuring to hear. There was one guy that came round that just spoke to me like I was a total idiot and as soon as he left I burst into tears. <laughs> ah, good times. Ready to measure the bathroom? <laughs> Can't wait, that's a face of joy. Here's my very technical drawing of our bathroom. <laughs> She'll be thrilled with this. Slide. Meter a bit. <laughs> Don't measure yourself to someone else's standards. Good, any more? The measure of the man is not the length of the tape. <laughs> That's what you said. That's six inches. Yeah. <laughs> that little bit sticks out as well. Yeah. Isn't it? So that is. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube. So we're looking at a bathroom that is 2.2 meters by 1.3 meters. Are you excited to have a new bathroom? I'm very excited to have a new bathroom. Me too. Fancy shower. Cool fix, bye! And I mean, this vlog just keeps getting more and more rock and roll by the second, doesn't it? So if bathroom measurements and tile samples weren't enough to get your fires burning and get you all excited, um, my job for this afternoon involves this large bag of threads. I got a date with some flasks. So I've treated myself to what I can only describe as a mega cross stitch. If there is possibly such a thing, as an exciting cross stitch. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd go that far, but basically it's a massive one that's gonna take me months and months. And I just wanted a new one that was gonna be, I wanna say a bit of a challenge. I don't know how challenging cross stitch can be. I know like the smaller the size of the fabric that you do, uh, the more it damages your eyesight more than anything. <laughs> so I normally, when it comes to embroidery or cross stitch or whatever, I normally buy like a kit, which means that it comes with the pattern and the fabric and the hoop and all the threads you need. And it's like a really good way of doing it. It's just like super easy, but I couldn't find any kits that like appealed to me. So I went on to Etsy instead. And there's a different way you can do it where you just kind of buy the pattern separately. You can get like a downloadable pattern and then that will give you a list of all the threads you've got to buy. <laughs> So, as you might be able to see, I went a little bit crazy. I found it on Etsy. It's a little stained glass Mickey Mouse, which I thought was so cute, full of lovely colours. The super exciting rock and roll thing that I <laughs> have got to do for this afternoon is that I also bought myself some thread storage. I know, hold the phone, ladies and gentlemen. After the recommendation of my friend Alice, who is also a cross-stitching grandma, um, I went for this little box and they're just little things so you have to sit and wrap each colour around it and then it comes with little labels for the numbers of the colours so you can have like, it'll be like a little library system. Just dreaming of the day that I can film a vlog and I go somewhere <laughs> or do something slightly more exciting than colour coding my embroidery threads. <laughs> I mean, it might have taken me about six hours to do all of this. <laughs> Who could say? Who could really know? This is a thing of pure beauty. Look at that organisation. Have you ever seen anything like it? It's a modern day masterpiece, everyone. I was just about to sign the vlog off for the day because we're just going to get cosy and have a nice chilled evening now. Adam's currently making a chicken and leek pie for dinner. Mashed potatoes, some veggies. So I'm about to write Adam's Valentine's card and I thought I'd show you it because it's actually hilarious. I'm not going to describe it just in case he can hear me on the camera while he's downstairs but this is Adam's Valentine's card. Also I've just done this envelope for Adam's card and now realised it looks slightly like a ransom note. So that's romantic. So thank you guys so much for watching. It's been really fun actually. I kind of get like vlog fear. I don't know, I like overthink vlogging so much. Um, but when I do just click the camera on for like cozy lazy days like this, 
it's actually really nice. I like just like hanging out with you really casually. I hope you guys are doing okay. I hope you're looking after yourselves. I hope you're getting through it. Um, I've had a bit of a tough couple of weeks actually. I'm finding it difficult being away from my family now. So if you're feeling that, um, just know that I'm totally right there with you. It's really, really hard. Um, and we're all doing really well to get through it, to be honest. So I'm thinking of you, if that's the case. If you're far away from your family right now, I'm thinking of you. And I'm sending lots of love and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Goodbye from me and Gollum. <laughs>